ಸ್ವತತ್ಸವಿತೋರ್ವರೇಣ್ಯಂ ಭರ್ಗೋ ದೇವಶ್ವೀಮಹಿ ಪ್ರಚೋದಯ ಓಂ ಶಾಂತಿ 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 ನಮಸ್ತೆ ಮೈ ಡಿಯರ್ ಫ್ರೆಂಡ್ಸ್ ದಿಸ್ ಈಸ್ ಸಿಕ್ಸ್ತ್ ವಿಡಿಯೋ ಆನ್ ಕೋರ್ ಟೀಚಿಂಗ್ಸ್ ಆಫ್ ಅನಾಮಲಾಯಿ ಸ್ವಾಮಿ ಎ ಡೈರೆಕ್ಟ್ ಡಿಸೈಪಲ್ ಆಫ್ ಮೆಹರ್ಸಿ ರಾಮನ ಐ ಸ್ಟಾರ್ಟ್ ದಿಸ್ ವಿಡಿಯೋ on core teachings of anamlai swami regarding mind anamlai swami was a renowned spiritual teacher and a direct disciple of the famous indian sage ramana maharshi he followed the teachings of ramana maharshi closely and <coughs> emphasize the importance of understanding and transcending the mind in the spiritual path while there might not be a comprehensive written record of anamlai swami's teachings specifically on the mind his teachings can be inferred from the broader teachings of ramana maharshi whom he followed closely here are some key points that anamlai swami in line with ramana maharshi's teachings would have likely emphasized about the mind one understanding the nature of the mind anamlai swami would have stressed the importance of understanding the nature of the mind he would have likely taught that the mind is just a bundle of thoughts and desires and it creates an illusion of individuality and separateness to observing the mind like ramana maharshi anamlai swami would have advocated the practice of self inquiry or self awareness observing the mind understanding its movements and questioning its source would have been key components of his teachings by observing the mind one can realize that it is not who they truly are three dissolving the mind in the heart anamlai swami might have also emphasized the practice of surrendering the mind to the heart symbolizing the idea of transcending the thinking mind and dwelling in the silence of the heart this practice leads to a direct experience of one's true nature detachment from the mind detachment from the mind's fluctuations would have been a crucial teaching an aspirant is encouraged to observe thoughts without getting attached or identified with them realizing that thoughts come and go and they do not define one's true self is essential 5 silencing the mind anamlai swami would have likely taught methods to clean the mind such as meditation chanting or deep breathing a quiet mind is more receptive to self realization and is a sign of spiritual progress 6 living in the present moment 
both Anamla Ishwami and Ramnam Harasi emphasized the importance of living in the present moment. The mind often creates anxieties by dwelling on the past or worrying about the future. By staying present, one can experience life directly without the distortion of the mind. Transcending dualities Anamla Swami would have taught that the mind often creates dualities such as good and bad, pleasure and pain. Transcending these qualities, transcending these dualities through self-realization leads to a state of inner peace and equanimity. Remember, while these points are inferred from the teachings of Ramana Maharshi, Anamla Swami would likely have shared similar insights given his close association with Ramana Maharshi and his commitment to the path of self-enquiry. Here are some additional teachings that Anamla Swami might have emphasized regarding the mind based on the traditional Advaita Vedanta philosophy and the teachings of Ramana Maharishi. 1. Mind as a tool Anamla Swami would have likely taught that the mind is a valuable tool for practical everyday functions but is not the true self. Understanding that the mind is a tool allows one to use it effectively without being dominated by its incessant chatter. Witnessing awareness he might have stressed the concept of witnessing awareness where one learns to observe the mind as a detached witness by being aware of thoughts and emotions without active participation or judgment individuals can realize their own consciousness beyond the mind. 3. Eradicating Egoic Tendencies The mind driven by the ego often creates a false sense of identity. Anamla Swami would have likely taught methods to identify and dissolve the egoic tendencies of the mind. By doing so, one can realize the true self beyond ego consciousness. The illusory nature of thoughts. Thoughts according to Anamla Swami's teachings are transient and lack inherent reality. By understanding that thoughts rise and fall without any lasting substance, individuals can develop non-attachment to the mind's content. 5. Surrender and Trust Anamla Swami might have emphasized surrendering the mind and its doubts to a higher power or the inner self. Surrender involves letting go of the need to control everything through the mind and trusting the natural flow of life. Self-realization beyond the mind. Ultimately, Anamla Swami would have taught that self-realization or enlightenment transcends the mind. It is an experiential understanding that goes beyond intellectual knowledge. Directly realizing one's true nature happens 
when the mind becomes still and the pure awareness shines forth. Seven, compassion and empathy. While discussing the mind, Anamla Swami might have emphasized the cultivation of compassion and empathy. When the mind is quiet and the heart is open, one can connect deeply with others, understanding their suffering as well as their joys, gratitude and contentment. Cultivating gratitude for the present moment and finding contentment in what is rather than constantly seeking fulfillment through the mind's desires leads to inner peace and fulfillment. These teachings rooted in the Advaita Vedanta tradition and the insights of Ramana Maharshi reflect the profound wisdom that spiritual teachers like Anamla Swami share to help individuals navigate the complexities of the mind and realize their true nature. Annihilation of mind. The concept of the annihilation of the mind is a profound and often misunderstand topic in spiritual teachings, particularly within the context of Advaita Vedanta and other dualistic philosophies. It is important to approach this concept with a clear understanding to avoid confusion. In the context of Advaita Vedanta, and the teachings of sages like Ramana Maharshi, the term annihilation of the mind does not mean the complete eradication or destruction of the mind in a literal sense. Instead, it refers to the dissolution of the egoic mind, the cessation of the mind's identification with the individual self or ego. It is about transcending the mind's habitual thoughts, patterns, desires and attachments leading to a state of profound inner stillness and silence. When spiritual teachings speak of annihilating the mind, they often mean overcoming the mind's illusion of separateness and individuality. This process involves realizing that the true self or Atma in Advaita Vedanta is beyond the mind and is not limited by it. It's about recognizing that the mind with its constant stream of thoughts is a tool for practical everyday functioning but does not define one's ultimate reality. The annihilation of the mind is synonymous with self-realization or enlightenment. It is the direct experiential understanding that the true nature of the self is beyond the fluctuations of the mind. This realization brings immense freedom, inner peace, and a sense of unity with the entire existence. Practices such as self-inquiry, meditation, and surrender are often used to facilitate the annihilation of the mind in the sense of transcending its limitations. Through these practices, individuals learn to observe the mind, question its source, and eventually abide in the pure awareness that is untouched by the mind's activities. In summary, the annihilation of the mind 
in the spiritual context refer to the transcendence of the egoic mind's limitations and illusions leading to the direct experience of one's true infinite nature beyond the mind it is not a literal destruction of the mind but a profound shift in consciousness a realization of the eternal aspect of being that exist beyond the temporary and ever changing fluctuation of the mind anamlai swami's teachings regarding ego the concept of ego is central to many spiritual teachings including those of ramana maharishi and his direct disciple anamlai swami here are some key teachings related to the ego one recognition of the ego both ramana maharishi and anamlai swami emphasize the importance of recognizing the ego understanding that the ego is not the true self but a collection of thoughts beliefs and identities is the first step towards spiritual realization second self inquiry self inquiry is a fundamental practice in the teachings of ramana maharishi as well as anamlai swami it involves questioning the source of the i thought by asking who am i and diving deep into self exploration individuals can directly experience the ego's illusory nature and realize their true egoless self 3 observing the egoic pattern anamlai swami likely taught the practice of observing egoic patterns in one's thoughts emotions and behaviors by becoming aware of these patterns individuals can distance themselves from the ego and its conditioning fourth ego as a false identity the ego creates a false sense of identity separating individuals from others and from the underlying unity of existence anamlai swami would have emphasized that this false identity is the root cause of suffering and that recognizing it as false leads to liberation ego dissolution the teachings likely emphasized the dissolution of the ego through self surrender self inquiry or meditation when the ego dissolves individuals can experience a state of oneness and unity with the universe six humility and surrender both humility and surrender are antidotes to the ego acknowledging acknowledging one's limitations and surrendering the ego's desires and attachments lead to spiritual progress surrender in this context means relinquishing the belief that one is the sole doer and controller of their life seven compassion and love developing compassion and love for others helps dissolve the ego's boundaries when individuals extend their concern and care beyond the self the ego's limitations are transcended leading to a sense of 
interconnectedness and unity with all beings. 8. Living in the present, the ego often dwells on the past or worries about the future. By living in the present moment, individuals can weaken the grip of the ego. The present moment is free from the ego's constructs and allows individuals to experience life directly and authentically. 9. Detachment from the egoic mind. Anamla Swami likely emphasized the importance of detachment from the egoic mind by observing thoughts without attachment and identification individuals can disentangle themselves from the ego's grip and experience a sense of inner freedom understanding and transcending the ego is a gradual process that involves self-awareness self-inquiry and a deep understanding of one's true nature. These teachings guide individuals on the spiritual path towards realizing the ego's illusory nature and experiencing the profound truth of their existence beyond egoic limitations. <coughs> annihilation of ego and mind. The concepts of the annihilation of ego and mind are central themes in many spiritual traditions, including Advaita Vedanta and the teachings of sages like Ramana Maharshi and his disciple Anamla Iswami. These concepts refer to the dissolution of the individual self, ego, and the mental processes, mind, that create a sense of separateness and identity. Here is a deeper exploration of these concepts. 1. Annihilation of ego. The ego in spiritual terms represents the individual's sense of self which is often characterized by desires, <coughs> attachments, identifications and a sense of separateness from the rest of existence. Annihilation of the ego does not mean the literal destruction of the self but the realization that the ego is a construct of the mind, an illusion that veils the true nature of one's being. This realization leads to a profound sense of unity with all of existence. Self-realization, the annihilation of ego, involves realizing one's true nature, often referred to as the Self or Atma in Advaita Vedanta. It is the understanding that the individual Self is not separate from the Universal Consciousness Brahma. This realization brings about a state of liberation, moksha, from the cycle of birth and death, sansara. Surrender and Detachment Surrendering the ego involves letting go of the sense of control and realizing that there is a higher universal intelligence at play. Detachment from the outcomes of actions and desires weakens the ego's hold on the individual. Humility and service. Cultivating humility and engaging in selfless service, Shiva, are 
practice is that dissolve the ego when one acts without the desire for recognition or personal gain the ego diminishes to annihilation of mind the annihilation of the mind refers to transcending the constant chatter and fluctuations of thoughts and emotions it is about achieving a state of mental stillness and silence where the mind no longer controls or dictates one's experience of reality silencing the mind through practices like meditation self inquiry or mindfulness individuals can quiet the mind regular practice allows one to observe thoughts without getting entangled in them leading to a state of inner peace living in presence by focusing on the present moment individuals can break free from the mind's tendency to dwell on the past or worry about the future presence is where true life unfolds untouched by the mind's projections direct experience beyond the mind's concepts and interpretations there exist a direct experience of reality annihilation of the mind involves transcending mental constructs and directly perceiving the underlying truth of existence witness consciousness cultivating the awareness of being the witness to the mind's activities helps in disidentifying from thoughts and emotions this witness consciousness is stable and unaffected by the mind's fluctuation in summary the annihilation of ego and mind in the spiritual context involves recognizing their illusory nature surrendering the sense of individuality and control and transcending the mental processes that create a sense of separateness this dissolution leads to a state of oneness inner peace and profound spiritual realization Anam Lai Swami's teachings on self surrender Anam Lai Swami was a direct disciple of the renowned sage Ramana Maharshi and he emphasized the importance of self surrender as a spiritual practice self surrender in context of Anam Lai Swami's teachings refers to surrendering the ego or the individual self to a higher power or the supreme reality here are some key aspects of his teachings on self surrender one understanding the ego anam lai swami taught that the ego or the sense of individuality is the root cause of suffering and bondage by surrendering this ego one can experience liberation and inner peace two total surrender self surrender according to anamla swami is not a half hearted or partial surrender it is a total surrender of the ego desires and the sense of personal doership this means relinquishing the idea that i am the doer and recognizing that everything happens according to a divine plan trust and faith surrender involves having complete trust and faith 
in the divine or the higher power. It means letting go of worries and anxieties, trusting that whatever happens is for the best and having faith that the universe is unfolding as it should. 4. Surrendering the mind. Self-surrender also involves surrendering the mind and its incessant chatter. Anamlai Swami emphasized the importance of self-inquiry and self-awareness to quiet the mind and experience the underlying silence and stillness of the self. Grace of the Guru According to Anamla Ishwami, the grace of the Guru, spiritual teacher, is essential for true self-surrender. Surrendering to the Guru means surrendering to the teachings and guidance offered, trusting the Guru completely and following the spiritual path with sincerity and dedication. 6. Living in the present moment. Self-surrender involves being fully present in the moment, accepting the present circumstances without resistance and embracing life as it is. It means letting go or regrets about the past and worries about the future. Humility and Detachment Humility is a natural outcome of self-surrender. When the ego is surrendered, there is no room for arrogance or pride. Additionally, self-surrender involves detachment from the fruits of actions, understanding that the results are not in one's control. Remember that these teachings are deeply rooted in the Advaita Vedanta tradition which emphasizes the non-dual nature of reality. Self-surrender in this context leads to the realization of one's true nature as the infinite and eternal consciousness. 8. Self-inquiry and surrender. Anamla Ishwami often stressed the close relationship between self-inquiry, asking the question, Who am I? and self-surrender. He taught that sincere self-inquiry naturally leads to self-surrender as the questioning mind eventually realizes its limitations and surrenders to the deeper understanding of the true self. Surrendering desires. Self-surrender involves letting go of worldly desires and attachments. Anamla Swami taught that desires perpetuate the illusion of the ego. By surrendering desires, one can attain a state of contentment and inner peace irrespective of external circumstances. 10. Understanding the intellect. Surrender is not merely an intellectual understanding. It is a heartfelt letting go. Anamla Swami emphasized the need to surrender the intellect as intellectual analysis alone cannot lead to spiritual realization. True surrender goes beyond intellectual comprehension and becomes an experiential reality. Surrendering the sense of ownership. Self-surrender includes relinquishing the sense of ownership over the body 
mind and possessions understanding that everything belongs to the divine and is temporary in nature helps in cultivating a sense of detachment and surrender 12 acceptance and surrender acceptance of whatever comes in life is a vital aspect of self surrender anamla swami taught that accepting both pleasant and unpleasant experiences with equanimity is a form of surrender resisting or resenting life events create mental turbulence whereas surrendering to the present moment brings peace 13 surrendering the doership surrendering the sense of personal doership means recognizing that all actions are happening spontaneously and are not <clears throat> controlled by an individual self when the ego surrenders its claim to be the doer there is a profound sense of freedom and liberation 14 self emptying self surrender involves emptying one self of the egoic identifications and self centered thoughts anamla swami often used the metaphor of emptying a vessel when the vessel of the mind is emptied of its contents thoughts desires ego it becomes receptive to the divine presence 15 continuous surrender self surrender is not a one time event but a continuous process it is a moment to moment practice of letting go and trusting the divine intelligence each moment provides an opportunity to surrender and deeper one's faith it is important to note that the concept of self surrender can be deeply personal and may vary in interpretation among different individuals and spiritual traditions anamla swami's teachings rooted in the advaita vedanta philosophy emphasize the direct experience of the truth through surrender self inquiry and self awareness now i complete this video thank you for watching this video namaskar my dear friends i will continue with more videos on the teachings of anamlai swami thank you namaskar namaste